So today we're going to talk about applying to university. Why uh, should you apply to university? Um, there are a number of reasons. I mean, first of all, half of all school leavers now go to university, so it's quite a normal thing to do. Uh, secondly, you might be really interested in a subject that you want to study for another three or four years. Um, it might be that you uh, need a university degree for your career that you hope to do. Um, and you will recognise the fact that, um, generally speaking, those who have got a university degree tend to end up earning more money and they get better promotion in later life. So there are a number of reasons for doing a, a university degree. There are, you know, 130 universities, something like that, and the important thing to realise is that they are not all equal. There is a hierarchy of universities from Oxford and Cambridge at the top going right down to universities which are frankly very easy to get into. And it's quite important for everyone applying to university to understand that although you will be interested in the nature of individual universities, that some have a greater career value, let's put it like that, than others. And that is reflected in the grades that they require. So if you want to see what the hierarchy of universities looks like, from Oxford and Cambridge at the top, asking for you know, an A star and two A's or more, to universities towards the bottom who might uh, allow you to come with really quite low A-level grades. If you want to see the hierarchy, you just need to look at the many published uh, lists of university entry requirements, such as Brian Heap's book, Degree Course Offers, and there are many others available online, which put the universities in a hierarchy based on the grades that they normally require. And, and you know, the advice would be to apply to the universities which um, are the most demanding, but which you can manage. Not everyone should go to university. I mean, I think that you know, there are plenty of young people who these days are choosing to do an apprenticeship, for example, as, as an alternative to university, and that may well be sensible. Because we know that probably a quarter of students going to university um, end up with jobs that are not very well paid. They need to have gone to university to do those jobs. They're what are called non-graduate jobs. And information about those courses and universities are now, uh, is now available on um, the website, on the Department for Education, for example's website. It's called the Longitudinal Outcomes Research. And it's very important that people apply to university bear that knowledge in mind. Some subjects studied at university, like uh, medicine and economics, are much more likely to lead to a highly paid job than a subject like um, media or creative arts. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't study media or creative arts, but you certainly need to have seen that information. So what do you do if you want to apply to university? First of all, you need to have done the right A-level subjects or BTECs for the course you're applying for. So if you want to be an engineer, for example, you will have done A-level maths and physics. Um, and uh, you will work hard to get the grades that are normally required by the university you're applying for. You might even want to do an extended project qualification, which is just what it sounds like if it's a project based on a specific interest of yours, especially if you're applying to uh, study a course that you don't do at A-level. So if you were applying to be an architect, for example, it's um, a great benefit to you to do an extended project on something to do with architecture. If you're applying to study medicine, it would be a very good thing to do an extended project on some aspect of medicine, because it would prove to the university in a way that nothing else can that you have a genuine intellectual interest in that degree course. Uh, obviously your GCSE grades have some bearing on it. I mean, it's going to be very difficult to get into Oxford or Cambridge, for example, if you haven't got, let's say, eight GCSE grades, seven or better. Um, so that has a bearing. Remember that 
uh, universities may have very similar names but be quite different. So, uh, so Cardiff University, for example, is not the same as Cardiff Metropolitan. You need to be careful about that. Uh, some universities give unconditional offers, which means that they don't require you to get any particular A-level grades. And um, that's just a sort of form of bribe, really. It's, it looks as if the university is slightly desperate. And although it may seem attractive to you, you should not automatically think that having an unconditional offer from a university is a good sign. Um, now, the next thing is what subject should you apply to study? These days, far too many SIP formers think that studying a subject like English or history at university is a waste of time uh, and money because they don't lead to a particular um, career. But that's a mistake because most careers don't require you to have studied a particular subject at university and many people who are very successful in life have studied subjects like English and history uh, at university and if they are your favourite subjects you should not be um, persuaded by anybody that they are useless subjects because they're not, they're most valuable. Um, then there are subjects like medicine where you know if you want to be a doctor you've got to study that vocational course at university. And then finally there are subjects which appear to be useful like a degree in journalism but they're not particularly useful because if you ask any journalist would you recommend someone doing a journalism degree they'll say no um, because when you come to work as a journalist we will train you what to do what we want is people who have got knowledge of something in um, the world like uh, physics or English or history.